guys as usual we're in the garage uh we're gonna tighten up the top end of the motor on this six seven cummins project of ours um we're gonna set our valve lash put our valve rockers in and set the lash for our new push rods and you know we got our new springs all that kind of stuff so we're gonna have to set it it's probably gonna be a little more than an, an adjustment that you would normally do but anyhow we're gonna get started also looking at it I'd also like to try and get this grid heater out of here, put our delete plate in, maybe put our fuel rail up here, and put our injector lines on, and our valve cover. That's what I'd like to get done. Uh, I've ordered some parts for the truck. I ordered the kit to put the turbo on, a couple other little things that not every fourth gen owner has done, and we're going to try and do that so i really need to get cracking on this thing so see you're gonna see more videos probably more frequently hopefully might leave some stuff out we'll see but anyway here's valve lash how to set it how to do all that put the valve cover on all that kind of shit i'm using glacier diesel's installation guide again but we're gonna go with 10 on the intake 20 thousandths on the exhaust the reason is that's kind of what the 5.9 Cummins without the emissions did. We don't have the emissions, so that's what we're going to do. But as you can see from the Glacier Diesel thing, the normal spec is 6 to 15 on the intake and 21 to 34 on the exhaust. So we'll still actually be in the 6.7 spec, so it's not a big deal. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the motor over to top dead center. decided to go about figuring out where we are position wise on the motor is just look at all the push rods looking at cylinder two you can see that the intake push rod is significantly lower than the exhaust looking at that that tells me that the number two intake side should be loose we'll be able to set number one intake number two intake number four intake one three and five on the exhaust rotate the motor again and reset them like I said, these are new push rods, so they're gonna be a little different. So if you're doing an adjustment, you just put them in, you check them, make the adjustment you needed to, rotate the motor, check the rest of them. And we'll set what we can, rotate it, hope everything's still good, and then we will set the other side. And I'm actually gonna rotate the motor two more times because after you're setting something like this, I personally feel you should double check it after you rotate it so the parts move and all that. So here we go, we're gonna install our rockers and start our adjustment. One thing to note, you wanna put your valve bridges on, you'll set your rockers, you wanna make sure you're centered up on there, but also make sure that you're in your push rod, make sure you know it's not sitting off to the side or something like that. Just make sure everything's seated the way it should. Number one, as you can see, both of them are loose. Number two, just the intake side is loose. The exhaust is tight because it's depressing the valves. Three, just the exhaust is loose, so on and so forth. Loosen the, uh, loosen this adjuster up with the jam nut. We'll loosen that up, loosen the adjuster, and we'll slide our feeler in here. We'll get it so it just kind of drags. And myself, I like things kind of tight, so we're going to keep keep it kind of tight. I, in the past, I've done it where I've just taken like an 18 rather than a 20 or a 19 and set it with that because then when you set it and you lock everything up, it seems like then you're right at 20,000. So we might end up doing that, but who knows? So like I said, we'll loosen the jam nut, loosen the Allen, 
get our feeler in there, set it, lock it down, and move on. I'm just going to double check what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an, an 11 and a 21 here's our 21 and check it see if we can get slide it in and it's tight oh we can get it in but it's tight so that tells me we're pretty good yeah we're good so it's within a thousandth or so of what we want which is kind of ideal you're not going to get it exact and I mean really when you're working with feelers that's what it is it's all by feel so my feel would be different than somebody else's here's an 11 now the 11 goes in a lot easier I, I, I would like to tighten that up myself so all I'm going to do is just loosen her up and like I said earlier I think what I'll do is I will shove a 9 in there I'll set it by that, and that should put us pretty close. Take my 10. Yeah, now it's nice and tight. Kind of difficult to get it in there. So we're going to call that good. And you know what? I'm saying all this. I got this nice 10, 20 loose. But I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use the feeler pack. And I'm going to set them using the 9 and the 19. And that way we should be probably good to go. And go from there. Alright, so all of our rockers are in, everything's clearance right. I've rotated the motor over a couple times just uh, to check, you know, double check the valve lash. I mean, really anything that moves, like wheel bearings, that, anything like that, you want to give it a go around, let it kind of work out, just let it settle, if you will, make sure everything's right. So now I'm going to pull this grid heater plate off right here. I'm going to pull that off I'm gonna put our delete plate on I'm gonna put our fuel rail on on our fuel rail I'm gonna add I'm gonna do a couple things that you wouldn't normally do if you were just like say check and lash I'm gonna put our fitting for our dual CP3 setup on that so we'll have to take the 
rail pressure sensor out because there's a block that that goes into with the ATS kit. We're going to take that out and then put the the adapter fitting for the fuel rail, you know, additional fuel supply in, and then we'll put the, you know, we'll put that in, we'll put our injector lines in, because I find it's much easier to put the injector lines in when you have the rocker box uh, spacer out. So after we do that, we'll put the rocker box spacer in, and then we'll put, with that comes the gasket that has all the wiring for our injectors right here. So we'll put those on, which we'll be very careful when doing, and hopefully get our valve cover on then. Top end of this motor will be buttoned up, and we'll move on to further installs. So I pulled our grid heater and I found what I expected, but it's different than I expected, I guess. Anyway, what I found was YEGR suck. So as you can see, we pulled the grid heater plate. This is our intake panel. See all that black stuff? That's not just discoloration. That's chunks. You got chunks of EGR shit, you know exhaust gas it's sort of this thing up i mean it's i mean whole chunks that's all going into your motor that's terrible so i'm gonna i'm gonna try and clean this up and vacuum this out best i can um probably spray some degreaser or something in there um i'm not gonna get too wild but yeah that's that's pretty bad I mean, look at it. This is going through your motor. I mean, I don't know if the EGRs on the new Urea trucks are better or not, but after seeing this, I don't know that I'm going to leave an EGR on anything. Just look at this buildup. It's horrible. I mean, it is cake. Alright guys, so we got our rockers in, they're all adjusted, everything seems to check out, we got our fuel rail installed, I didn't have time to connect the injectors, so on our next video we'll install our injector lines, really not that hard. We also got our fitting for our dual CP3 setup for the dual feed rail installed. Everything's tight. Pretty soon, we'll have our valve cover on, and then we'll get to doing the turbo, change the transmission, fuel system. We got a lot more to do, and then we'll go racing. 
I'll see you guys on the next one.